Hi everyone! In this video, we will go through the process of creating ticketed events in Triple Seat using the integrated features of Attendees by Triple Seat. We will review how to link your event in Triple Seat to the Triple Seat Tickets portal, create your event's website as well as your tickets for the event in the registration form, and finally, how to publish the event's site for your guests to access. In addition, we will also look at how the guests will interact with your event's website when purchasing tickets. Our customers are telling us they see an increase in revenue and profitability of ticketed private and semi-private events, special wine events, holidays, chef dinners, brewery tours, fundraisers, and meetings are different types where the guest commitment is via tickets and the event is orchestrated by the events and marketing teams. We heard you, so we went all in by acquiring and integrating a comprehensive product that specializes in tickets and event planner solutions. Triple Seat Tickets is that solution that provides easy management of ticket sales along with the rest of your events so you no longer have to work outside of Triple Seat. It's important to note that a subscription to Triple Seat Tickets is based on the location level, so if I am a user with access to multiple locations, I will want to make sure all of my locations have been properly set up with access to Triple Seat Tickets. When creating a ticketed event, I will want to follow the same steps I normally do with creating an event in Triple Seat. Whether I'm converting a lead or using the new event button, I will need to enter event details, a contact and account, and location details. Once my event is created and I am on the event details page, I will now see the Triple Seat Tickets logo on the right hand side of the event with a button that says Open Triple Seat Tickets. When I click on this, I will be redirected to the Triple Seat Tickets portal that is linked to my Triple Seat account. On the first tab of this new page, I will be prompted to confirm existing information from my event created in Triple C and add additional details. The information that carries over from my event is the event name, the location details, and the date and time of the event. The event's name will also duplicate as the event's URL subdomain, along with a unique set of characters when creating a link for the event site. The event URL can be updated if I have not yet published my event site. Next, I will choose my template for the event's website that my guests will see when purchasing their tickets. On the right, a preview will show me what the website will look like. We will review making further edits to the content and layout of the website later. After I choose the template for my site and confirm the location details as well as the date and time, I can click Create Event. It's important to note that the event's template type and configuration cannot be changed after I've created the event. Now that my event has been created, I can make additional adjustments to it. On my events page, I am directed to the event icon where I can edit my event's general details, export event data, and communicate with my event team. In my details section, I can make edits to the event's name, description, and URL and I can also choose whether I want this event to appear on my venue's website portal and choose a thumbnail image that will appear in my venue's event calendar. On the dates page, I can adjust the time of my event and add additional days if needed. In Triple Seat, the time zone is pulled at the group level, so if I am a part of a group of restaurants, I will need to make sure I am adjusting the time to reflect my group's time zone. If I use bookings in Triple Seat, a best practice here would be to link my events separately rather than add days here. It's also important to note that if I change the time or days here, it will not update in Triple Seat. It's also important to note that any additional changes I make to the event, whether it's in Triple Seat or Triple Seat Tickets, will not update on either side, so I will want to make sure I am updating in both apps. If I want to offer multiple price points for different date ranges, for example, an early bird price compared to a day of price, I can set those dates here within the milestones page. I will only be able to set the date range here. The actual pricing of the tickets will be set up later. 
A default milestone is created for each event, and when I add a new milestone start time, the default milestone's end day will move from the day of the event to the day before the new milestone begins. Other sections within the events tab I can double check to ensure are correct are that the event's point of contact information is correctly inputted, as well as the venue's address. In the contact section, the creator of the event in Triple Seat will have their email address populate here, and I can change the name above, which will be the correspondence name that my guests will see if I send out email blasts. We will later come back to this page to go over the exports section within event data. My events website is broken into two sections, the design and content of the website and the website settings. In a later video, we will go more in depth on how to customize the website manager here in Triple Seat Tickets. The template I selected when first creating my event will display here with placeholder text and images that I can easily edit and replace to include an event description, menus, a breakdown of an agenda, and more. It's important to make sure to take the time and go through replacing the placeholder fields so my guests are not confused when they go to my event's website. At the bottom of the page, I could also include links to my Triple Seat Lead form and Triple Seat Direct form for private events and catering to reach a wider audience, as well as a link to my venue's portal website if my guests are interested in what other ticketed events I am hosting. No matter what template I choose, there will automatically be two pages created for my event site, the home page and a 404 error page. I can see these in the site manager where I'm able to add additional pages or save my changes as a new template to use in the future. These two pages should not be removed if I'm making any changes. The site settings section is where I can make additional customizations to the look and feel of my site. It's important that whenever I make a website for my events, I will need to go into general settings and upload my logo so it replaces the template's placeholder. Additional site settings will be covered in more detail in our next video all about site customizations. Now I will begin by creating the actual tickets for my event. First, I will want to go into the options within the general section. Here I will enter an event capacity if I only have a limited amount of space. I can also limit how many tickets can be bought by a single registrant here underneath group registration. A best practice is to leave this number at 10. For example, if I'm hosting an event like a Valentine's Day wine dinner, I would want to make sure couples can purchase their tickets in pairs or small groups. If I am doing this, I would then want to make sure that I check off this box so my guests don't need to enter a unique email address per attendee if they are buying multiple tickets. Next, I will scroll down and customize the messages that can display if my event has sold out, if the registration page is unavailable, or if tickets are unavailable. Within the build section, I can now create the tickets. I will click on passes and begin detailing the one that is automatically created. I will need to give the ticket a name and I can also provide a description for the ticket. For example, I could write here what is included in the ticket price. Next, I can assign a ticket capacity. While I just set my entire events capacity on the last page, I can set capacities here as well if I'm using multiple tickets that are at different price points. For example, the first ticket I will build will be my VIP ticket, which is set at a higher price. I will set the capacity to 10, put the display order at one so it shows first, and then scroll down to groups and availability to set my early bird milestone pricing and my general milestone pricing for this ticket. I want to make sure that I click save before adding another ticket or this information will not be stored. I'm going to build out my second general admission ticket and fill out all the same fields as before. Since I want my VIP ticket to show first, I will want to make sure I set this ticket's display order priority at two. After I've created the second ticket and set all the pricing, I will click save again. It's also important to note that taxes and fees are not included in the pricing breakdown in triple seat tickets. 
I will want to make sure that when I set my ticket price, it is inclusive of any taxes and fees within my venue. For example, my general admission ticket's base price is $20, but I also want to make sure that I include a 10% gratuity, a 3% admin fee, and 7% for my state's sales tax. After calculating those taxes and fees, I should be adding an additional $4 to these tickets to account for those prices. So I will change my price from $20 to $24 to make sure I'm accurately collecting those inclusive taxes and fees. After I'm satisfied with the second ticket and I'm finished with all the pricing, I will click save again. Next, I wanna go down to registration forms and begin customizing what information I will need from my attendees. The default registration form consists of a heading, an old first name, last name, and email address field. Any fields in the registration form can be customized by clicking on them, and I can drag and drop additional fields or elements such as drop-down lists, radio buttons, or checkboxes. A best practice here would be to add the mobile phone number field as an option for my guests to input. In confirmations, I can edit multiple types of confirmation screens and emails that are sent to the attendees once they register for the event. If I want to include QR codes for my attendees to use to enter the event, I can click on this icon and add this merge field that will create a unique QR code per attendee. There are also options to customize when notifying attendees of waitlists, cancellations, and past changes. In the payment section, I'm going to click on billing information. Here I can choose the transaction currency type, the payment method, and I can add a cancellation or substitution policy here. As of now, Triple Seat Tickets is currently only connected with Stripe as a payment processor. If my venue is already integrated with Stripe, I can click here to learn more about connecting my own account. Now that my registration form has been enabled and my tickets are created, I can publish my event's site so I can begin getting attendees to sign up. In the top right corner of the page, I will see Website, where I can click to either preview how the site will look or publish it. A best practice is to definitely preview the site's content first, so I don't have to unpublish it and make any changes. Once I am satisfied with how the site looks, I will click Publish. Now, if I click back into the Events tab underneath the General section, I can click on my URL link to see the guest experience when signing up for the event on my site. Going into my events website, I can now see what my guests will experience when they sign up for this event and purchase their tickets. The group registration I had set earlier appears here, and if I click Add Attendee, I will be able to select the passes for both attendees and then fill in the required information for them both. After I confirm the information, I will be able to fill in my payment details and then register for the event. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about creating your ticketed events or would like more information on Triple Seat Tickets, please reach out to our support team at tickets-support at triple